Here we're going to answer the question of why allele frequencies change. So why in this case, if we have one red individual that then goes to four, then shifts basically the whole population to the red individuals. Why do the allele frequencies change over time? I'll go through a couple of reasons why this is. So the Hardy-Weinberg equation is true only if the following five assumptions are met. Again, large population size, um, random mating, no mutations, no migration, and no natural selection. So I talked about in those videos, this rarely occurs in a normal population. So there's five evolutionary forces that can significantly alter the allele frequency in a population. Genetic drift, non-random mating, mutation, migration, and selection are all things that can cause this shift to occur. Remember, these are assumed in the Hardy-Weinberg equation, but this is a little bit more accurate that we might see in a given population. You see here, 50% of individuals uh, targeted by predators here. The brown ones have good camouflage, the black ones have poor camouflage, and over certain generations we see a selection for the brown phenotype. So five agents for evolutionary change. One is mutation. Mutations occur, again, just normally with DNA polymerase. It can also be influenced by the environment. Gene flow, the movement of genes from one population to another. Non-random mating, where in this case we see a female choosing this male over this male with showier feathers, resulting in a population that has shifted to showier feathers. Genetic drift, where we're drifting towards a certain phenotype. And of course, selection. Uh, for in this case, it could be one color that camouflages better compared to another color. So genetic drift, let's explain this just a little bit. Genetic drift in a population can lead to the elimination of allele from a population by chance. In each generation, a random set of individuals reproduces to produce the next generation. The frequency of alleles in the next generation is equal to the frequency of alleles among the individuals reproducing. And we see here, here's our population, very similar to the first one that we said, the genetic drift here, the brown ones, we're producing it um, with some heteros heterozygotes and some homozygote dominants. Then we see this population uh, breeding here, and we notice that now we have all homozygous dominants here. So again, this is just a genetic drift drifting towards a certain genotype. Random sampling and genetic drift. So we're going to watch a little animation here. It occurs over five generations. Uh, it's a simulation of common example used to describe the effect of random sampling as genetic drift. In this population of 20, there's a shift from an allele frequency of 50% of the blue allele to 100% for the blue allele in just five generations. So we see here there's a nice 50-50 in the original population. Our second generation goes through this sampling. And we see there's been a increase in the number of the blue alleles. And this is, again, random sampling here, the ones that get to choose to pass on their genes to the following generation. After three generations, we see there's even a greater reduction. Now, because this is random sampling, this doesn't mean that it's always going to occur in the same proportion. As we'll see in this animation, if we're able to count the red alleles, we'll see there's actually one more in this case. But getting to the fifth generation, only the blue ones are selected, and that's what carries on. So this genetic drift, it's a random loss of alleles, more likely to occur in a smaller population. The founder effect is a small group of individuals establishes a population in a new location. So often this can result in what happens. So here's our parent population. We have a migrating population, which is a very small portion of those total individuals. They form here. We notice that the purple ones initially are a very small percentage. Well, for whatever reason, those are selected for, and we see now a greater percentage of them ultimately getting to the loss of the red allele to only the purple alleles. This occurs typically more common in smaller populations when a group may leave one area or one island and go to another island. You get that isolated population and we get that separation there occurring over time. The random loss of alleles more likely occur in that smaller population and it's also true for what is termed the bottleneck effect. So again, under genetic drift, we have the founder effect which is a small group of individuals establishing in a new location. Then we have the bottleneck effect. It's a sudden decrease in population size due to natural forces. Kind of that necking down here. Parent population, significant genetic variation, a bottleneck event occurs. Could be disease, could be famine, could be a whole host of reasons. It's called a bottleneck because it kind of goes through a small opening. And we have a surviving population here, the green and the yellow. 
Same thing here, high initial population, uh, bottleneck effect, reducing the population. In this case, looking for these particular individuals. Get the term bottleneck because that's what's referring to of the neck of a bottle where it thins down a large population being forced to a small area. Non-random mating. This is mating that occurs more or less frequently than expected by chance. Inbreeding mating with relatives increases the homo homozygous. Outbreeding with mating, uh, mating with non-relatives increases heterozygousy. So non-random mating means that the individuals are being selected for some reason. Um, it's not just random. Uh, this could be, in this case, the brown color is deemed favorable. Mutations, another reason why allele frequencies change. Errors in DNA replication, this is the ultimate source of new variation. Mutation rates are too low to significantly alter genetic frequencies on their own. There also needs to be kind of selection forces against there. When we say mutation, this takes us back to some previous lectures, myself over here. Uh, it can have some silent mutations, some nonsense and missense mutations. There can be some more drastic ones, such as duplication, inversion, insertion, translocation. So all of these are different types mutations that could occur. You know, all errors in DNA. Uh, migration, movement of individuals from one population to another, um, a very potent agent for change. There's immigration, movement into a population, and emigration, movement out or exiting a population. So we see on this side, we see the emigrating population, they're exiting, and then on this side we see the immigrating population. So we see that this um, homozygous recessive uh, bird has emigrated and emigrated into this population. These are all homozygous dominant. Now with this individual here, assuming it survives and reproduces, will now increase the allele frequencies of the recessive allele. Last portion of selection here uh, is the selection process. Some individuals um, leave behind more offspring than others. Sorry for that overlap there. Artificial selection is when breeders select desired characteristics, and natural selection is the environment selecting for that. Selection is a, is a stats concept here in math. Basically, you have your sample, and you have a sample within a population. You're selecting for that one, in this case, particular individual. You cannot predict the fate of any single individual, but it's possible to predict what kind of individual will tend to become more common in a population. So it can't be for very specific reasons. Uh, the exact individual, as we kind of indicate here, well, the individual, we can probably determine what traits this individual might have. The goal is to have a subset of a larger population that is representative, pulling from each of the groups here to get our sample.